So I got thinking about SQL this morning because I need to use it for the first time in years. And because I've been working with the RDF almost exclusively for the last several years. And I gotta say like SQL actually kind of sucks. Like I've been using SQL or at least I had been using SQL since the late nineties. Uh, I started out using MySQL just like everybody else. Uh, I ditched it in 2002 for Postgres. I've also used Oracle and Microsoft at work and of course SQLite. I gotta say, if you have to use SQL, use Postgres. Uh, unlike MySQL, whose developers prioritize speed, Postgres prioritized correctness. And so what happened was Postgres caught up speed-wise uh, while MySQL was, still has all sorts of weird behavior you have to code around. So yeah, Postgres surpassed uh, MySQL performance-wise around 2007, then caught up feature-wise with Oracle a few years later. So there's basically no point in putting up with Oracle unless you're already stuck with them. Otherwise, if you insist on SQL, you know, and want something embedded, uh, like and not a server, then use SQLite, it's fine. Uh, but I, I want to interrogate why we're using SQL anyway. So the actual SQL we use is kind of a bastardization of a relatively crisp algebraic model that was designed in the 70s when physical computing resources were scarce, uh, especially storage. It was intended for suits to do their own data analysis. And what it left aside was the fact that uh, a big part of the point of being a suit is you have minions that do things for you. Another thing that is kind of salient about SQL was it was preoccupied with an absence of pointers. So that was like something that the uh, COD, the designer, really wanted was everything was just values and there was no, you didn't have to do pointer dereferencing. But of course, everybody uh, just uh, goes and sticks surrogate keys in their tables anyway. So, um, you know, that kind of ship has sailed problems though like sql is a really clunky verbose language and you need all of this infrastructure like orms or whatever people who fuss about the term orm want to call it just to to write it because you're not writing it by hand also it executes the maximally destructive operations like with the least amount of syntax so like anything like update and delete for example uh, you have to add verbiage to make the operation safer. Uh, and it's really easy to make a mistake and permanently wreck stuff. Uh, you have to add extra commands to be able to undo an operation. So like begin and rollback. Uh, and it is very easy to forget to do this. Um, delete should be a lot harder to do and update should just straight up be banned as far as I'm concerned. Tables, they only store what you tell them to and there's no like inherent sense of remembering changes over time. So like it just uh, is the present value of something. And if you want to uh, have uh, anything that resembling a log, uh, you got to do it by hand. Then you have to add a materialized view of the current state by hand. That is, assuming your database has materialized views, if it doesn't, you've got to make a bunch of triggers, uh, assuming it has triggers, so that's all got to be done by hand. Uh, it's super wasteful in general because you have to store a whole row even if you change one of the column's values. Uh, maybe it's less wasteful in column stores, I don't know. You know, you got to come up with the table layouts by hand. Uh, you gotta uh, do like stupid stuff like deciding the length of a varchar or the precision of a timestamp or a numeric value. Uh, you gotta make all kinds of decisions about naming conventions. You gotta do indexes by hand. Uh, you gotta decide what you're gonna call constraints. Like, there's just so many things to label. So it further exacerbates the symbol management problem. That is you have symbols that you have to manage and this is a problem. Tuning the database, that's gotta be done by hand, uh, especially on Oracle where the tuning parameters are like super, super consequential. Uh, I haven't done it so much in Postgres or MySQL, uh, but definitely Oracle, like they're super, super consequential. Like 
making the block size the same as the file system, that kind of stuff, like super, super low level tuning crap. What else? Modifying the schema, yes. Uh, modifying the schema of a production database is a super risky operation. You need to have a point in time backup before you start. You probably have to take the entire thing offline. Uh, you need a whole bunch of infrastructure just to do the schema manipulation and heaven forbid you also have to change the data in any significant way. This whole business about having no pointers just goes by the wayside, as I said, because everybody's using surrogate keys, which are basically pointers. And everything about null sucks. Everything. Oracle. Empty string. Same as null. Evaluates to null. Everything about nulls are just awful. So, what is good about SQL? Well, obviously, ACID is good. Uh, it's declarative. You tell it what you want, not how to do the job. Uh, it reduces to an algebra, although the SQL query algebra is not the same thing as the relational algebra on, upon which it is modeled. But the fact that it is an algebra means it can be optimized because you're going to have two things that are equivalent uh, operations algebraically that uh, compute differently. What else? Storage and retrieval can be made efficient for some value of the term through the use of explicit data types and table declarations. That's about all I can think of. Um, how it should work? Well, I should be able to just dump my data into a database and it should figure out the most optimal way to store it. And if the layout ceases to be optimal, the database should be smart enough to rearrange it and then uh, keep the representation of it unchanged. Uh, the database should decouple the problem of storing input from the problem of validating it as it stands. If you have something that's like a bunch of things with not null and you put in a null, you know, because you don't have that information, like sorry, you can't put any information in the database and that's problematic in a lot of situations. Oh yeah, there should be a way to partition the data along the plane of validity. So like you can optimize the storage and retrieval of like the valid stuff and then the invalid stuff is like still kind of accessible. Um, and it'll like also be able to tell you what, what stuff is invalid so you can fix it. Uh, it should be impossible to do destructive updates full stop. It should likewise be very hard to permanently delete anything. I should be able to roll back the state of the database to any point in its lifetime. I shouldn't have to compromise the current state of the database to do this. So like the, what everybody else sees should be uh, still accessible while I am tooling around in the history. Oh, and they, they should just give up on the no pointer thing because like and instead focus on working with pointers that are sensible. I could probably think about more stuff to do put here, but uh, this is it for now. So what instead? Well, a typical no SQL document oriented databases are out because they actually do less than SQL does. I may be biased, but I would be inclined to try this stuff on an RDF graph database. RDF already has Sparkle as a query language, and it's got three inference mechanisms, so RDF schema, OWL, and Shackle. RDF is funny when it comes to RDF schema and OWL, like, because they're open world, and Shackle is closed world, so, like, what that means is if you have something that appears to be a contradiction, it is uh, assumed to be a new fact in an open world situation, whereas it's assumed to be invalid in a closed world situation. So only shackle would be intended for validation, but like the inference mechanisms are very powerful because they generate statements, they generate content based on what's already in there. So they infer stuff based on what's been asserted. And you should be able to tell the difference between what's been inserted and what's been inferred. And this is like pretty simple to implement in an RDF graph database. Like you can write one on top of a key value store. I've done this already. So it's like a straightforward way to work out desired behavior and then like optimize for performance. Anyway, I've already finished my coffee. So sayonara.